Now let's get into function notation. Sometimes it's helpful to think of a function as a machine. So for example, you input an X value into your function machine and it spits out a Y value. Now I want to just make sure that um, we review function notation because this is a concept that students sometimes mess up. When you see f of, this is read as f of x, and this does not mean f times x. It does not mean that. This f is just a name. So this is telling us we're going to go to the function named f. We're going to be inputting in an x value. And what it's going to do to that x value is it's going to square it, multiply it by 3, and then subtract that x value from there. So it's really important you note that. So again, this letter that's in front is not a variable. It's a name of the function. Sometimes you're going to see that being G. Sometimes you'll see it H. You could see it. You can name a function anything you want to. I can name it Pi. I can name it Jessica after me. That would have to be a really cool function. Um, but, um, but that's all that that stands for. So when we get into function notation, when you see things like f of 2, what that's meaning is to go to your function and anywhere you see an x value, you're replacing that x value with this 2. So when I do that, I go to my function, anywhere I see an x, I replace it with a 2. Now, evaluate this. There's a little word value in there. Of course, it's missing an E, but hopefully you get the point. That means we're finding a value. So we're not solving anything here. We're finding a value of a function. Now, to evaluate this, we have to remember order of operations, PEMDAS. So the first thing to do is square that 2, which is 4. So I get 3 times 4 is 12, and 12 minus 2 is 10. Now, take note of how I showed my work here. Part of this class is learning how to notate your math homework and actually doing it in this way. And I do have to grade you on that. It's part of our course content outcomes for this class. So notice that all of my verticals or my equal signs are done vertically and you can follow every single step. Part of this class, not only just the grading part, but the reason you really want to make sure that you're notating your math correctly is so that I can read it. Because when you go on an exam, if I can easily follow all of your steps and you've made just maybe one little mistake in one step where you've multiplied three times two wrong or forgot, dropped a negative sign, but ev all of the rest of your work was right, I want to be able to give you partial credit and as much partial credit as I can give you. But if I can't see where that mistake was and easily follow your work, I'm not going to be able to do that. So it's really in your best interest to make sure that you're modeling the type of notation that I'm showing you in class. So on your graded write-ups and on your uh, your midterms and your finals so that you really um, get as much credit as you can. And I don't have to dock notation points because I hate having to do that. So you'll see it modeled throughout all of my videos, the right notation. I really recommend as you're taking your notes in this class that you're taking it using that same notation. So it really becomes second nature. All right, let's get back to actually learning this stuff. So <clears throat> the second thing you see here is f of x plus three. And notice that plus three is on the outside of the function. So this is just saying take your function, which is 3x squared minus x, and add 3 to it. That's all that that says to do. And there's nothing we can do from there. The last thing is a little different. Now notice that this plus 3 is inside of the parentheses. So this means we go to our function f. And anywhere I see an x, I'm going to input this entire quantity. So that becomes 3 times the quantity x plus 3 squared minus the quantity x plus 3. Make sure that you're remembering to put this in parentheses so that you're actually subtracting this entire quantity and not just subtracting that first value. Okay, now when I go to actually evaluate this, a lot of students want to take this 2 and distribute it to the x and the 3, which is not the case x plus 3 quantity squared means x plus 3 times x plus 3. My best advice is write that out so you don't make that same mistake where a lot of students will just say, oh, that's x squared plus 3 squared, which is 9. That is not true. Okay, You cannot just distribute that squared through. This means x plus 3 times x plus 3. 
So now when I multiply this out, I get x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. Three, 3 times x is 3x. Add those together and you get 6x. And then 3 times 3 is 9. And then I'll distribute this negative sign through, so I get minus x minus 3. Now I'll distribute this 3 to each of these places. So 3 times x squared is 3x squared. 3 times 6x is positive 18x. And 3 times 9 is positive 27. And then I still have this minus x minus 3. And now I'll combine like terms. And I get 3x squared plus 17x plus 24. Some more examples with function notation. <clears throat> when you see this negative in front of f of x, that's basically saying it's asking for the opposite of f of x. The other way you can look at it is it's the same thing as multiplying f of x by negative 1. When I distribute that through, I get negative 3x squared plus x. Now, this is asking us to input negative x everywhere I see an x in our function. So I'm going to go up to our function. Anywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it with this negative x. So I get 3 times negative x quantity squared minus a negative x. Negative x squared is negative x times negative x, which gives us positive x squared. Minus a negative is a positive. Or the other way you can look at it is the opposite of a negative value is a positive value. f of x plus h. So what this means again is to go to our f of x function and anywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace that entire, that x with the quantity x plus h. All right, so here we go. It looks really ugly. Don't stress out. Just go very slowly. So anywhere I see an x, I'm replacing it with x plus h. Okay, I'm going to move my equal sign to right there. So again, as we said in the last slide, x plus h quantity squared means x plus h times x plus h. Okay. So now I'll distribute this through. So I get x times x is x squared. x times h is xh. h times x, we can also write as xh because uh, 2 times 3 is the same thing as 3 times 2. Um, multiplication is commutative so that you can change the order that it's multiplied and you'll still get the same answer. So hx is the same thing as xh. And the reason I wrote it that way is so that you can see that those are both the same terms. And then h times h is h squared. And then I'll distribute this negative sign through so I get negative h or excuse me negative x minus h. All right now let's distribute the 3. So 3 or excuse me, I think first we can simplify inside of these parentheses. xh plus xh, so I've got one of these. I'm adding another one, so all together I have two of them. Now I can distribute that 3 through. So I get 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus x minus h and that's as far as we can go it looks crazy and complicated but that's it there's no like terms that we can combine so we stop there okay now this next one actually has an actual name which is called the difference quotient and we're going to talk about that in the next two slides but i want to just do one really quickly so when you see something like this all that this means <coughs> is to first figure out what f of x plus h is, which luckily we did right here. And you get that output. 
and then you subtract f of x, which we have right here. And then you put that whole thing over h. All right, so let's do it. So first, write in what your output of f of x plus h was. So we found that that output was this, 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus x minus h. Now we'll take that and we will subtract f of x. So f of x is 3x squared minus x. And again, we have to subtract all of f of x, so make sure that you have that in parentheses. And that whole thing is over h. Now I'm sure most of you, your heart's beating really fast because this looks like it's super scary and complicated, but it really isn't. Take a deep breath, you know you can do it, and you're gonna see we're gonna take this ugliness and we're gonna totally simplify it down so it's a lot prettier. So first thing I'm gonna do is distribute this negative sign through. So <clears throat> I'll write down 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus x minus h minus 3x squared plus x all over h. Whew. Now looking at this, now that I have everything out of parentheses, I can see that I have a 3x squared minus a 3x squared. So those can cancel. I have a negative x plus an x. So those can also cancel. I'm going to write a little move up here. So that ends up becoming 6xh plus 3h squared minus h all over h. Now, a lot of students at this point want to just cancel an H out of the top and the bottom, but you can't do that. In order to cancel out terms, you have to factor it out of every single, or cancel a factor. You have to can't factor it out of every single term first. So I first need to pull an H out of every term in the numerator. So when I pull an H out, 6xHB is left with 6x, 3H squared is 3H, and minus h leaves me with minus 1. And you can see if I distribute this h through, I'd get h times 6x, which is 6xh, h times 3h, which is 3h squared, and h times negative 1 is negative h. So those are equivalent statements. And now this is all over h. And now that I've actually pulled that h out, now I can cancel it from the top and the bottom and I'm left with an answer of 6x plus 3h minus 1. So I took all of this grossness on the first line and I made it so much prettier. Let's do a couple more examples of these. Oh, and before we do that, if you want more examples of it, um, we are going to be doing two more. But if you're finding that after those two, you're wanting a little more help, I really recommend you go to this website here. And this has just more example problems that you can kind of watch through until it finally clicks.